Uh, this isn't meant to be a lesson in Morse code. What I want to try and do here in a couple of short videos is to give you some idea of how Morse code was developed and used as a tool to aid in the safety of life at sea. Now I suppose the best place to start is at the beginning. So we'll start with the alphabet and numbers in Morse code. Now, before I start any transmission, you'll hear the starting signal. And at the end of every transmission, you'll hear the finishing signal. That's standard practice. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to give, have a word about the Morse you're going to hear. Now, if you tune around on YouTube, you'll see people using electronic keys, like side swipers and book keys and things. Now, if they're used properly, electronic keys give you perfect Morse. It's something like typing your letter into a computer and printing it from the computer. This is like using a pen. The Morse you hear here is a function of the operator's hand. You can tell which guy's at the other end by his fist. Now for the alphabet in Morse code. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu. And now for the numbers. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Zero. And now for the alphabet without the voice. And now for the figures without the voice. Right, now to show you how that sounds when it's used as a language using uh, words and spaces, I'll tap out a sentence that has every letter of the alphabet in it, and that's the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Right, that's enough Morse for now, but that is the basic material, except for the Morse key here. Now all a Morse key is, is a spring-loaded switch that connects that wire to that wire. Now this one is the real McCoy, it's got a bit of history. It started life in 1928 when it was made by at the Elliott Brothers in London. It's made of mahogany and brass. Uh, it was first of all moved to Portishead Head Radio at Burnham on Sea in Somerset and there it would have been used to contact ships in the North Atlantic from way up in the Arctic Circle down as far as the Caribbean and into the Mediterranean. At the beginning of the Second World War it was moved into the Marine Office on Cardiff Docks, that's in the old, Cardiff, uh, the old Tiger Bay and uh, there it survived the blitz and it was used to re-examine radio officers before they went to sea after they'd been ashore for a little while maybe they'd been torpedoed or bombed 
and uh, then it was kept in the Marine Office after the war and we still used it for re-examining radio officers who've been ashore for a while and also for examining um, uh, radio amateurs. So if you did your test in uh, Cardiff, the chances are you use this key or it's made over here. Right, that's all for now, but I'll be back with another video by and by, I hope, uh, in which I'll try to demonstrate how Morse was used in practice at sea. Now, as you might imagine, a radio officer's job on a ship was quite interesting and occasionally even exciting. And that's inspired me to write three books where I have the radio officer as the hero or chief character. So if you're interested, you can go to my blog at poetonhill.blogspot.com and there you can find out a little bit more about me, a little bit more about the books and you can he even browse through them. Well, you've heard the finishing signal, the end of work signal. I'll finish this with the end of transmission signal. That's all for me.